Informally, a global issue is any issue that adversely affects the global community and environment, such as environmental issues, political crisis, social issues and economic crisis. Global issues range in severity from minor issues that affect everyone to global catastrophic risks that threaten the existence of the entire human race or its society. Solutions to global issues generally require cooperation among nations. In their book Global Issues, Height and Sites emphasize that global issues are qualitatively different from international affairs and that the former arise from growing international interdependencies, which makes the issues themselves interdependent. It is speculated that our global interconnectedness, instead of only making us more resilient, makes us more vulnerable to global catastrophe. Topic: <laughs> Global issues. Presented below are issues relevant to the whole world today. Topic: Artificial intelligence arms race An artificial intelligence arms race is a competition between two or more states to have its military forces equipped with the best artificial intelligence AI. Since the mid 2010s, many analysts have argued that such a global arms race for better artificial intelligence has already begun. According to Siemens, worldwide military spending on robotics was US$5.1 billion in 2010 and US$7.5 billion in 2015. China became a top player in artificial intelligence research in the 2010s. According to the Financial Times, in 2016, for the first time, China published more AI papers than the entire European Union. When restricted to number of AI papers in the top 5% of cited papers, China overtook the United States in 2016 but lagged behind the European Union. 23% of the researchers presenting at the 2017 American Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence conference were Chinese. Eric Schmidt, the former chairman of Alphabet, has predicted China will be the leading country in AI by 2025. topic global catastrophic risk a global catastrophic risk is a hypothetical future event which could damage human well-being on a global scale even crippling or destroying modern civilization an event that could cause human extinction or permanently and drastically curtail humanity's potential is known as an existential risk potential global catastrophic risks include anthropogenic risks caused by humans technology governance climate change and natural or external risks examples of technology risks are hostile artificial intelligence and destructive biotechnology or nanotechnology Insufficient or malign global governance creates risks in the social and political domain, such as a global war, including nuclear holocaust, bioterrorism using genetically modified organisms, cyberterrorism destroying critical infrastructure like the electrical grid, or the failure to manage a natural pandemic. Problems and risks in the domain of Earth system governance include global warming, environmental degradation, including extinction of species, famine as a result of non-equitable resource distribution, human overpopulation, crop failures and non-sustainable agriculture. Examples of non-anthropogenic risks are an asteroid impact event, a supervolcanic eruption, a lethal gamma-ray burst, a geomagnetic storm destroying electronic equipment, natural long-term climate change, hostile extraterrestrial life, or the predictable sun transforming into a red giant star engulfing the Earth. <laughs> Need of disarmament Disarmament is the act of reducing, limiting, or abolishing weapons. Disarmament generally refers to a country's military or specific type of weaponry. Disarmament is often taken to mean total elimination of weapons of mass destruction, such as nuclear arms. General and complete disarmament was defined by the United Nations General Assembly as the elimination of all WMD, coupled with the balanced reduction of armed forces and conventional armaments, based on the principle of undiminished security of the parties with a view to promoting or enhancing stability at a lower military level, taking into account the need of all states to protect their security. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Global warming. Global warming is a long-term rise in the average temperature of the Earth's climate system, an aspect of climate change shown by temperature measurements and by multiple effects of the warming. The term commonly refers to the mainly human-caused observed warming since pre-industrial times and its projected continuation, though there were also much earlier periods of global warming. In the modern context the terms global warming and climate change are commonly used interchangeably, but climate change includes both global warming and its effects, such as changes to precipitation and impacts that differ by region. Many of the observed warming changes since the 1950s are unprecedented in the instrumental temperature record, and in historical and paleoclimate proxy records of climate change over thousands to millions of years, future climate change and associated impacts will differ from region to region. Ongoing and anticipated effects include rising sea levels, changing precipitation, and expansion of deserts in the subtropics. Future warming is expected to be greater over land than over the oceans and greatest in the Arctic, with the continuing retreat of glaciers, permafrost, and sea ice. Other likely changes include more frequent extreme weather events such as heat waves, droughts, wildfires, heavy rainfall with floods, and heavy snowfall, ocean acidification, and massive extinctions of species due to shifting temperature regimes. Effects significant to humans include the threat to food security from decreasing crop yields and the abandonment of populated areas due to rising sea levels. Migration of animals has been a serious situation. The effects from global warming are messing with animals, their habitats, and when animals migrate. Studies show that in the future, changes will happen to how animals forage in the micro and macro habitat. A selection of these animals could become climate change sensitive species, for example high alpine birds, because the climate system has a large inertia and greenhouse gases will remain in the atmosphere for a long time. Many of these effects will persist for not only decades or centuries, but tens of thousands of years. Possible societal responses to global warming include mitigation by emissions reduction, adaptation to its effects, building systems resilient to its effects, and possible future climate engineering. Most countries are parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC, whose ultimate objective is to prevent dangerous anthropogenic climate change. Parties to the UNFCCC have agreed that deep cuts in emissions are required and that global warming should be limited to well below 2.0 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit compared to pre-industrial levels, with efforts made to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit. Some scientists call into question climate adaptation feasibility, with higher emissions scenarios, or the 2 degree temperature target. Public reactions to global warming and concern about its effects are also increasing. A global 2015 Pew Research Center report showed that a median of 54% of all respondents asked consider it a very serious problem. Significant regional differences exist, with Americans and Chinese whose economies are responsible for the greatest annual CO2 emissions among the least concerned. Most of the habitat selection that was studied was affected by grassland cover. An issue at the footnote of global warming is ocean acidification. It is an issue today regarding the rising amounts of acidity in both surface and deeper waters that threaten biological and biochemical processes. The role of the ocean is a major role in climate regulation, yet ocean acidification is not looked at as a big deal when it comes to global warming. It alters marine ecosystems which include destroying a wide array of marine ecosystem services. There is no policy, international or nationally, to help with ocean acidification. Although, it is a global issue, ocean acidification will have great effects along coastlines and in coral reefs. Some people think that ocean acidification can be dealt with through UNFCCC, this is thought because climate changes is causing ocean acidification because of increase of CO2 in the atmosphere, but some do not agree. There are multiple reasons why nothing has been done on a larger scale regarding ocean acidification, such as the fact that it is not well understood scientifically. Also, the impacts may be felt locally but the problem is a global issue and cannot be dealt with easily. More people need to realize the problems of ocean acidification, coral reefs are becoming bleached and more animals are becoming extinct because it is not a livable habit for aquatic animals.
Topic: <laughs> Human impact on the environment. Human impact on the environment or anthropogenic impact on the environment includes changes to biophysical environments and ecosystems, biodiversity, and natural resources caused directly or indirectly by humans, including global warming, environmental degradation such as ocean acidification, mass extinction and biodiversity loss, ecological crisis, and ecological collapse. Modifying the environment to fit the needs of society is causing severe effects, which become worse as the problem of human overpopulation continues. Some human activities that cause damage either directly or indirectly to the environment on a global scale include human reproduction, overconsumption, overexploitation, pollution, and deforestation, to name but a few. Some of the problems, including global warming and biodiversity loss pose an existential risk to the human race, and overpopulation causes those problems. People are mostly malnourished in countries where the population is growing very rapidly, like third world countries that do not have access to birth controls or family planning. Overpopulation is a growing issue among many people, at a growing rate of 1.2%. The population is projected to double to 14 billion people in 60 years. It is believed that the Earth's carrying capacity is going to be around 14 billion people because of the foot shortages most of the world's population is already experiencing. More than 66% of the world's population is malnourished or starving according to the World Health Organization. In 1950 only 20% of the world's population was recorded as malnourished or starving, the percentage has more than tripled, which is alarming. Natural resources that are becoming critically low due to over-harvesting are, oil, natural gas, and coal. Once these resources run out the Earth's population could drop from 14 billion to 2 billion. It is important that humans start recycling and reducing the amount of natural resources, in doing this we can hopefully prolong the quality and sustainability of life on Earth. <laughs> Nuclear proliferation. Nuclear proliferation is the spread of nuclear weapons, fissionable material, and weapons applicable nuclear technology and information to nations not recognized as nuclear weapon states. By the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons (NPT), commonly known as the Non-Proliferation Treaty or NPT, proliferation has been opposed by many nations with and without nuclear weapons as governments fear that more countries with nuclear weapons will increase the possibility of nuclear warfare up to and including the so-called countervalue targeting of civilians with nuclear weapons destabilize international or regional relations or infringe upon the national sovereignty of states Four countries besides the five recognized nuclear weapons states have acquired, or are presumed to have acquired, nuclear weapons, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and Israel. None of these four is a party to the NPT, although North Korea acceded to the NPT in 1985, then withdrew in 2003 and conducted announced nuclear tests in 2006, 2009, 2013, 2016, and 2017. One critique of the NPT is that the treaty is discriminatory in the sense that only those countries that tested nuclear weapons before 1968 are recognized as nuclear weapon states while all other states are treated as non-nuclear weapon states who can only join the treaty if they forswear nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> weapons of mass destruction A weapon of mass destruction WMD is a nuclear, radiological, chemical, biological, or any other weapon that can kill and bring significant harm to a large number of humans or cause great damage to human-made structures e.g., buildings, natural structures e.g., mountains, or the biosphere. The scope and usage of the term has evolved and been disputed, often signifying more politically than technically. Originally coined in reference to aerial bombing with chemical explosives during World War II, it has later come to refer to large-scale weaponry of other technologies, such as chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear. <laughs> Potential for World War III 
World War III and the Third World War are names given to a hypothetical third worldwide large-scale military conflict subsequent to World War I and World War II. The term has been in use since at least as early as 1941. Some have applied it loosely to refer to limited or smaller conflicts such as the Cold War or the War on Terror, while others have operated under the assumption that such a conflict would surpass both prior world wars in both the level of its widespread scope and of its overall destructive impact. Because of the development and use of nuclear weapons near the end of World War II and their subsequent acquisition and deployment by many countries, the potential risk of a nuclear devastation of Earth's civilization and life is a common theme in speculations of a third world war. War. Another major concern is that biological warfare could cause a very large number of casualties, either intentionally or inadvertently by an accidental release of a biological agent, the unexpected mutation of an agent, or its adaptation to other species after use. High scale apocalyptic events like these, caused by advanced technology used for destruction, could potentially make Earth's surface uninhabitable. Prior to the beginning of the Second World War, the First World War (1914–1918) was believed to have been the war to end all wars, as it was popularly believed that never again could there possibly be a global conflict of such magnitude. During the interwar period between the two world wars, World War I was typically referred to simply as the Great War. The outbreak of World War II in 1939 disproved the hope that mankind might have already outgrown the need for such widespread global wars. With the advent of the Cold War in 1945 and with the spread of nuclear weapons technology to the Soviet Union, the possibility of a third global conflict became more plausible. During the Cold War years, the possibility of a third world war was anticipated and planned for by military and civil authorities in many countries. Scenarios ranged from conventional warfare to limited or total nuclear warfare. At the height of the Cold War, a scenario referred to as mutually assured destruction, MAD, had been calculated which determined that an all-out nuclear confrontation would most certainly destroy all or nearly all human life on the planet. Topic: See also Environmental issue List of global issues Social issue Biogeochemical cycle Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>